and that lets you save the who cares? True form life. Green look on the <laughs> Welcome to another edition of Exploring Mind and Body, the only health and fitness show in central Alberta. I'm your host, True Form's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. On today's show, we're going to talk about the intimidating word change and the benefits of it. All that and so much more coming up on... This is Exploring Mind and Body with True Form's Drew Tadia, fitness expert on 96.5 CKFM. In this segment, we're talking about changing food routines. Food is like exercise in many ways. Changing up your routine to avoid plateaus, which is when we hit a barrier when we don't see the changes anymore. It's also important in the gym and when it comes to food. We need to do the same thing if you want to continue to see results or if you hit that little bump you need to get over. Times of days can be changed. Of course, which foods you choose to prepare and what time of day you're eating them. If you do the exact same thing day in and day out, for most of us, we feel stagnant. We need changes. As much as many of us are afraid of change, we need them. At least small adjustments. If we do the same thing day after day, we get bored. We lose focus on our goals. We lose interest in what we're trying to achieve or what we've set out to do. Changing things up is also important in the big scheme of things. So change your eating patterns. Get up a little earlier and prepare a bigger meal. Change your regular shake to quinoa and eggs. Or if you have eggs and toast, try a shake and have that meal for breakfast. I run into a lot of people that eat the same thing every morning or go through a phase when they eat the same thing and think they won't get tired of it. I've done this myself. Then when we finally get tired of it and we don't want it all of a sudden for an extended period of time, which gives us one less option. Why don't we change things up before that time comes? Before we get tired of something and don't want to look at it anymore, let alone prepare and eat it. If we change things up before that happens, we can add it to our weekly nutrition schedule, giving us one more option of foods we enjoy. Don't be afraid to mix up your whole food schedule with what you eat. There's nothing wrong with breakfast foods for dinner. Try it out sometime. You may actually enjoy it. I often enjoy pancakes and eggs for my last meal of the day. Healthy pancakes, mind you, which can be found in my Complete Truth recipe book or maybe one I'll share on another show. I wouldn't recommend steak and eggs and mashed potatoes first thing in the morning, but I suppose I wouldn't recommend that at any time of day. My point is, it's important to keep things interesting in all aspects of life, more particularly in health and fitness, meaning both in the gym with meals to keep you motivated and moving forward. We want to continually get better, move forward, and see results. We do this by changing this up. There's no way around it. Humans are great at adapting, and without change, we're stagnant. Our muscles adapt to the same routine, and our bodies stay the same with food. Compare this to your financial situation. Let's say you have a salary. We do our job day in and day out, Does our salary change? Not likely. But if we put in more effort, we might get a bonus. If we make a change, do some research, and find some passive income, we can certainly enjoy another bonus of added income if we're willing to make that change. So put in that effort. Enjoy your little adjustments. True form life. All right, in this segment, we're going to talk about undue stress. Each one of us carry around undue stress either all the time or from time to time. I'm going with all the time for most of us. We're always worried about something, worried about if so-and-so will get along, worried about coworkers or employees, friends and family, who we are pleasing, who likes us, our jobs, and almost always our money. I like to call this undue stress. Most of the time, and I say most in capital letters, whatever we're worried about, whatever we're stressed about, whatever it is that stays in the back of our minds when it's not directly on our minds is something that isn't a big deal. At the very least, not as much as a big deal as we think it is. I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we did something we probably shouldn't have. We think we're going to get fired once the boss finds out, our best friend may leave our side, or maybe our parents will be disappointed in us. Our biggest problem in these situations is that we don't confront the issue. We put it off until it goes away, which it almost never does, or until we have no choice but to address it. This only causes stress or even anxiety to build up. Whatever we're worried about multiplies as we continue to put it off and worry about it more. Time is no friend when we're avoiding a problem. Let's talk about how to address an issue. I'm a big believer in lists. So what we're going to do is start a list. Instead of avoiding what's bothering us, let's pick the thing that's most relevant in our minds. The first step is write it down. After we've written it down, we're going to write down our biggest fear. That's right. Write down the worst case scenario. Then finally, you're going to write down as many things as you can as to what you can do to take action to address these fears. Most of the time, writing down the fear alone will be a big help. I'm telling you that I can almost guarantee you that once you address the situation, once you stare it right in the face, it won't seem so bad. It's that procrastination, that hiding, 
from the issue or problems that causes these issues to grow like they do. So once you sit down and actually address them, you'll see that they aren't so bad. And if that doesn't make you feel better, coming up with simple things you can do to make it better almost certainly will. Tell your best friend what happened. Tell your best friend what happened. They wouldn't be your best friend if they didn't understand you. Be upfront with your boss. Tell them what happened, why it happened, and why it won't happen again. And maybe if it's your parents or someone else, be honest with them. Most people are more understanding than we think. And if it's out of your control, let it go. Many times we worry about things we have no business worrying about. The most important thing we can do is address the situation in some way. Take action. Don't push your problems away. Don't push them deep down. Because whatever stress or worry it brings along with it, it's not worth it. So next time something's on your mind, instead of waiting days, weeks, or even years to do something about it, start now and make a list. Exploring mind and body with True Form's Drew Taddea would not be possible without the help from the following sponsors. Lens Chiropractic, AG Foods in Didsbury, CLC Fitness Center, Health Street in the Cornerstone Shopping Center Olds, and Shoppers Drug Mart. Working together to help build a healthier tomorrow. For more information on True Form Life, Drew Taddea, or how to become a sponsor of Exploring Mind and Body, visit trueformlife.com. In this segment, we're going to talk about fridge tips and how to make your choices easier and find exactly what you're looking for when it's meal time. The number one tip I want to start out with is put your healthy food in the front of the fridge. If it's unhealthy food and you want it, you'll move unhealthy food out of the way to get to it. On the other hand, there's a good chance you'll run into the old saying, out of sight, out of mind. If there's some healthy food stuck in the back of the fridge and you can't see it, there's a good chance you'll forget about it. This sounds funny, but you need to rotate your food. If you keep putting fresh food in the front of your fridge and your leftovers, if you keep putting fresh food in the front of your fridge, your leftovers will keep getting pushed back and again those prepared meals may be forgotten about. The next tip is organization. You really need to keep your fridge organized. Put your dairy on one side. Put your prepared meals in a certain place. Veggies in the drawer. However you want to do it, make your fridge organized and easily accessible to get at that healthy food. You never want to run into the problem of not being able to find that pre-cooked meal if you even remember it's there. If you know exactly where something is that you're looking for, or if you know exactly where to look when you want something, there's a better chance you'll find it. This tip right here may sound a little extreme, but it's not. We need to label our food with dates. There are containers that have an option to label when you want to set your food to the expiry date, or you could label it as to when you put it in the fridge. If nothing else, get some sticky notes and put the dates on of when you cook the food. This is especially important if you're cooking things that may contain salmonella, like eggs or chicken. Don't rely on your nose. Many times we open a container and smell it to see if it's good. I wouldn't suggest that. This goes right along with organizing. If you see the date on the container, maybe you'll grab that first if it's about to expire instead of something you just cooked and put in the fridge. You could also spend less time wasting and throwing away food if you move the oldest dates on the containers to the front of the fridge. This is all about making decisions easier. Make better choices. Things don't always have to be hard, especially when you're eating or living healthier. Don't rummage through the fridge when it's time to eat. If you know exactly where to go in the fridge, there's a better chance you won't open up the pantry because we all know what's in there. Try some of these tips so next time you reach in your fridge, you'll find exactly what you're looking for. We all learn at a different level, in a different way. We mirror differently and understand differently. We're all unique individuals, so how could we learn the same way at the same rate? It's important to understand how we learn so we can be efficient at whatever task we want to accomplish. At the same rate, we need to be able to keep our originality. We need to know it's okay to be ourselves and think outside the box. Our whole system is designed around being the same. It's difficult for us to be our real selves, our true form, if you will. We were taught phrases like, it's my way or the highway. If you don't like it, you can get out. That's the way it's going to be under my roof. Of course, there's exceptions. I'm not talking about doing anything immoral or breaking the law. I'm talking about being ourselves and being let to be ourselves or even encouraged. In the school systems, we're taught to color between the lines. We're taught to keep quiet, head straight, and follow directly behind the next person. I understand there has to be some sort of order. We should learn how to follow instructions. But where's the time delegated to do whatever you want? Where's the time to draw, be, talk, and act however you want? How do we lose our imagination at such a young age these days? How come the people that want to do things their own way have a label? They aren't a good kid or a good person. They aren't labeled original or exciting. If you're a kid, you're a troublemaker. And if you're an adult, you're outspoken or an activist. Both words that don't carry positive annotations. One of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs is, those who see the world differently are those who change the world. Entrepreneurs have a gift. They solve problems, usually more efficiently and find a way no one thought of before. 
Not only that, but they're not afraid to act on an idea. And believe me, not being afraid is a big obstacle. We have to deal with those same people that say stand in line, don't talk, and don't look around. There's many more bystanders than one teacher or one parent that'll say that'll never work. People that refuse to conform do change the world, though, for the better. Although I don't agree with Phil Knight's morals, he made the shoe industry what it is, creating the first Nike shoe with a waffle maker. Do you think Bill Gates was thought of as a success when he dropped out of school and started doing his own thing? It's so apparent what original minds can do in this world. How come we don't embrace it? I'm sure it's getting much better, but for the most part, the curriculum is still the same. Kids that don't do it exactly the same are taught they're wrong and get a lower grade in class. Then they get a comment saying they need to work on their listening skills. What if Edison wasn't allowed to work on the light bulb because he kept failing? In reality, getting closer to his goal. What if the Wright brothers were banned from learning how to build a plane? Where would we be now? Have you noticed something in common with these great feats? They weren't taught at any institution. They weren't assisted by a community or large staff. For the large part, these were individuals that thought unlike anyone at the time. For the most part, of course. Copernicus was banished because he was the first person to say the earth moved around the sun. Could you imagine how far our science would be along if they didn't try to burn him and all of his works in proving him incorrect? Columbus proved the world wasn't flat, and so on. These are people that wouldn't believe the norm and proved it wrong. And even today in our society, those people that think outside the box aren't celebrated. Well, not until they're worth billions anyways. I didn't like high school much or school law growing up. I wasn't good at it. I couldn't tell you how much my mom spent on tutors because I wasn't smart. I couldn't learn, and I was treading on failing grades. I worked for hours, but it didn't matter. It wasn't until college before school made a difference. For the most part, I came and went when I liked. I studied on my own, took the classes I wanted, and flourished when I had a professor that didn't have a stranglehold on what I did when I did it. This is the first time I started to do well in school. Still, it wasn't my favorite thing, but at least I didn't have to sit through any more tutoring sessions or teacher sessions talking about how I could work harder or get better grades. Now don't get me wrong, I took pride in my grades in university. I worked hard. I was always in the library if I wasn't in the classroom or on the field. I wanted to do good for me and for those that thought and said college isn't for everyone. Once I finally graduated, that's when my learning really took off. I read books and watched videos and started to teach myself the best way to learn for me. I no longer picked up books that didn't relate to my life and only my classes. I read about what I wanted, what I wanted to learn, and what's most beneficial to me in, in the position in my life. Not that long ago, I took a class I needed for fitness instructing. I was out of school for a couple years and hadn't been directly taught by anyone else. I have to say, I did horribly. I've got to be one of the worst people at following directions. This was a huge learning experience for me. I knew what to do, but I had no idea what the person was talking about or how to do it the way they wanted it. I was always the last person to understand and follow through with instructions. This was a difficult pill for me to swallow and a big hit to my ego as I feel I'm an educated person. It wasn't until days after I realized that I don't learn like others and that most of us learn at a different rate. If the same person had told me to figure this out on my own, I would have been done in no time. But that wasn't the case in the classroom setting. Nor is it the case for each one of my members and clients I teach on a daily basis. I have the privilege of running a kid's workout class. And one of the kids always says to me, Drew, can I do it the way I want to? Of course, is my answer every time. In fact, my favorite time during this class is at the end when all the kids pick their own exercises. You actually learn a thing or two. And the kids enjoy it because they get to come up with new ideas. What if we encourage growth? What if we encourage thinking outside the box and originality? What if we bred little entrepreneurs from the get-go? How much further would we be? How many more people can we positively affect in the world? What if we let everyone do it their way, as long as they get the same results, or a better one in a shorter amount of time? That's the world I dream of. No more labels of activists or being outspoken. Only people that want to learn and do it their way. All right, that's all we have for you this evening. Be sure to tune in next week. I'm True Form's Drew Tadia, fitness expert in health and fitness for a better world. Thanks for listening. You've been listening to Exploring Mind and Body with True Form's Drew Tadia, fitness expert. For more on True Form's Drew Tadia, visit trueformlife.com or call 403-510-4915.